Speaking of things that I'm not even going to say I'm disturbed by. At this point, I just have more questions than I have answers. Uh, Lizzo, of course, she, I almost feel like she's the new Cardi B. It's the person that the media has decided should be glorified no matter what. In fact, this past week, they are hitting Kanye over suggesting that clinical obesity is not something that should be promoted and understanding that clinical obesity instead is something that we should be discussing and trying to fix. So Twitter has run a banner that has been for the last, I don't know, three days saying that Lizzo hits back at you know Kanye West by essentially just saying that she likes being fat. And they're making this seem like this is the right way to hit back. No, we should discuss clinical obesity and we should discuss it with a sober analysis. So Lizzo did this uh, Vanity Fair cover story. She was a Vanity Fair cover story. And here are a few of her quotes. On race, she said, quote, the way black women have been treated in this country has made me feel very hopeless. I don't think there was a time when we were treated fairly and with respect. If I see hope in this country, it will come from the accountability of the people who have the privilege. As a fat black woman, this country has never gone forward. It's stayed pretty much the same for me. Okay, so I do want to just ask the question to Lizzo, what's it going to take for you to feel like you're privileged? Like, I actually want someone to tell me, like, when will Lizzo get on stage and say, I have a remarkable amount of privilege. I am a multimillionaire. I am giving awards. I am doing deals with Netflix. I am doing deals with Instacart. I am being handed questionable trophies for the work that I am doing. I am now on the cover of Vanity Fair, one of the biggest magazines, fashion magazines in the world. And I am essentially being glorified for things that I actually should make a committed effort to better in my life, like my clinical obesity. But despite all of this, they're telling me that it's great, it's amazing, and I'm being defended by everybody. But it's not, it's not privilege because I'm black. So I'm just wondering, what does it take for society to admit that any black person has privilege? Any black person. Give me Malia and Sasha Obama. I, I, I'm sure that despite their perfectly cushioned life, despite their multi-million dollar homes, despite their Martha Vineyard mansion, despite being able to have a party for their dad while everybody else was locked down in COVID, and Martha's Vineyard, maskless, woo, we're having a good time because my dad was a former president. I'm sure they could still get on stage and they could still do an interview and say that it's just hard for black people and that they still feel that pain. So I am wondering, I'm posing a question to the world. Give me a list. Give me the comment that I can read out loud that says, this is what... It is going to take for us to admit that a black person in society has privilege. Because to me, Lizzo is now a stunning example of privilege. But she's black, so we're not allowed to say that. No, no matter what, you are still allowed to be a victim. And she is speaking out, by the way, about this idea that when she performs, there's a lot of white people in the crowd. She doesn't like that. She has said, quote, I am not making music for white people. I am a black woman. I am making music from my black experience for me to heal myself from the experience that we call life, end quote. Okay, well, I'm going to have to say hashtag white lives matter to that. I don't know why we say these things. What does I am not making music for white people mean? Could could a white artist, could Taylor Swift give an interview and say, I am not making music for black people. I am making music from my white experience for me to heal myself from the experience that we call life. Could Taylor Swift say that? Question, again, just wondering. I have no answers here. I'm just wondering if, there would, if that would be totally fine. Fine. And if it is fine, then okay. I'm okay with this interview. Then we have achieved equality. We've achieved equality if Taylor Swift can say that she doesn't make music for black people. If it's only fine when Lizzo says it, then no, we haven't achieved equality. We have just recreated a form of racism that we feel is permissible in society. Moving on to more black suffering, no matter what, um, I don't even really know how to tell you about this because it seems like it's fiction, but New York City may in fact need Batman or Spider-Man, somebody that can beat up the Green Goblin gang because there is a Green Goblin gang. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, a bunch of black women that were dressed in neon green, part of a gang jumped on to the subway and began to pummel two 19-year-old women 
at a Times Square subway train stop, and they were released without bail on Tuesday. But I want to actually have you guys take a look at this video, take a listen to this video, because it's insane. Take a listen. Now, my producer, as we were watching this video, it looks like there's about eight uh, younger black women that are just beating up people that are dressed in these neon green nylon outfits covering their faces, but with holes cut out for their ponytails, which is even like just more weird. I don't know. It's just it's a very bizarre video. And I don't mean to laugh at these victims. But when my producer saw this video, she said, who is the person recording this? Right? Like, how could you just allow this to happen? And I said, in defense of the person recording it, I wouldn't know what to make of it. I, I don't think that my brain would be able to process that I was witnessing a crime. I don't know what I would think if a bunch of people that were dressed in neon green from head to toe, but with spaces cut out for their ponytails, jumped onto a plane and started screaming and shouting and cursing. I would, I would, I would maybe think that I was watching the Jabberwockies, like they were maybe going to break out into a dance or that I was being a part of something, that I was being entertained, or maybe it was an experiment and this was some sort of art experiment. I definitely would not have thought that people were being harmed or mugged instantly. Your brain just can't process something this bizarre. But yes, this is, this is what has happened in New York City. Who has been lax, New York City, which has been lax on crime for a very long time. Now you are having people that are indulging in fantastical crime, is what I see this as. Honestly, this is a Batman plotline. So the woman that was arrested, her name is Miriam Esoff. They caught one of them. She was 26 and she was cut loose on supervised release after being arraigned on a second degree robbery charge in the October 2nd video that I just played for you one day after she turned herself into the cops with her defense attorney at her side. So she actually turned herself in. And hopefully they will get the rest of these young women. And hopefully Batman and Robin and Superman and Spider-Man will assemble and save the people in these liberal hellhole cities. Thank you for joining me today. Come back tomorrow for an all new episode where I will be telling you some behind the scenes uh, circumstances that took place at the premiere, which is happening tonight. And I know that you are going to be watching it live with me, 8 p.m. Eastern.